In recent scientific evaluations, topical antiandrogens have emerged as promising candidates for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. Their mechanisms? To compete with DHT in binding to the androgen receptor, thereby mitigating its detrimental effects on hair follicles. Using topical antiandrogens for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia largely depends on a few factors. First, we want to make sure that the topical antiandrogen agent that we use doesn't go systemic because a antiandrogen that blocks all androgens, not like 5-alpha reductase or DHT, but blocks all androgens including testosterone, that's not a good idea for it to go systemic. So we want to make sure that it doesn't go systemic, and if it does go systemic, it has minimal anti-androgenetic effects. Next, we have to take into account the anti-androgen agent's binding affinity to the androgen receptor. After that, another consideration is the half-life of the anti-androgen agent. Binding affinity here means how strong or easily the anti-androgen attaches to an androgen receptor. Think of it as how likely a hormone is to stick to its matching receptor. In this case, the matching receptor would be the androgen receptor matching the anti-androgen or any other androgens like testosterone, DHT, androstenediol, and much more. Whereas the term half-life in a pharmacological context refers to the time it takes for the concentration of a substance in the body to reduce by half. In simpler terms, it's a measure of how long a drug or substance stays in the body before its amount decreases to half of its initial dosage. Now, on the topic of half-life, I want to go into it a bit more. Half-life calculation is crucial because it helps determine how frequently a drug should be administered to maintain its therapeutic effect. For example, let's take a painkiller like Tylenol Extra Strength for adults. It has a half-life of six hours. A patient may need to take it every six hours to ensure continuous pain relief. Overestimating or underestimating the half-life of a particular drug or substance could lead to ineffective treatment or even, in some cases, side effects. So, bringing this back to the context of the topical anti-androgen treatment, if there is a topical anti-androgen that's applied to the scalp, let's say, for example, RU58841, and let's say hypothetically that it had a half-life of 14 hours, that would mean, once attached to the receptor, RU58841, in this particular example, would be actively blocking the androgen receptor and thus preventing DHT from damaging the hair follicle for up to 14 hours. But again, I'm not saying that RU58841 has a half-life of 14 hours. I'm just using that as an example, just so you guys can get an understanding of what half-life is. Because some people watching may not have that sort of understanding. So I hope that helped. 